Hello again everybody. Um, I'm going to do a video today um, to talk about escapes with Lasius Niger and what are the things that you have to look out for. Um, but the main part of the video, uh, which is one of the topics for escapes, is going to be me actually um, feeding the Lasius Niger the main colony, so you can see that how I do it. Um, because I have seen a number of posts recently and a number of videos on the internet um, of people saying that how do I feed my big colony? It's really difficult. Um, so yes, this is how I do it. So first of all, escapes. What? There are three main methods that your ants will escape. Um, the first of them is poor construction, that you've not put your setup together right. Make sure that all the pipes are pushed in, all the connections don't have any cracks or gaps in them, because if there is any weakness anywhere in the construction, they will find it. And the other thing to keep an eye on with this is if you do give them substrate, watch out what they're doing with it. They can occasionally push bits of sand in between connections. I'm just showing there's one with a grain of sand here. I don't think they're doing that there. But yeah, they can push sand in and wedge stuff more open. Um, and then the second way that they can escape is um, this is my fluon barrier in the corner of the mini outworld and you can see they they can't cross the fluon barrier they will fall but that doesn't stop them trying over and over and over again they will just constantly come and test your fluon barrier and over time they will wear it down so Keep an eye on the fluon, especially in the corners. Now, I'm not too worried because my outworld has got this lid on it. Uh, and what I'm showing here is the lid has got laser cut slits in it, which is what lets the air in. Um, and actually, as you can see, it's really difficult to even see that they are a slit. So an ant will not get through there. And, and I'm sliding a piece of paper in here just to show um, that it is actually a slit. And even then I had difficulty getting the paper in. So you can see how thin they are. Now, my outworld doesn't rely on the lid. I'm, the fluon is there to stop them, but this is like my second line of defense in case they do ever get past the fluon. So I've got double protection. And then finally, my, my biggest way that they escape, the third way that they will get out is feeding. Um, so here, what you're looking at, this is a, a bit of apple that's been in for about three days now. Um, and one of the problems, when I, mean, I give them a relatively large chunk of apple but one of the problems that I face is that as the surface of the apple dries out they start to burrow into it to get to what any um, apple juice that's still left in the middle somewhere and so as you can see from these pictures I've got issues because there are ants actually inside the apple um, and I've said this before when I was um talking about protein when I did the wasp video. Again, if you've got a big bit of protein, they will tunnel that out and get inside the protein. Um, and here's a, a grape. Again, this is half a grape. This has been in for about three days and I would like to get this out and change today as well. But as you can see, they're burrowing down the side of that and digging into that. So this is where I face the majority of my escapes is when I'm taking old food out. So get one of these. This is just a, a bulk standard Tupperware with a lid. Now I keep the lid on to stop any dirt from getting onto the fluon barrier just to keep it clean. Um, but yeah, it's an old Tupperware container, not an old Tupperware container, new actually. I bought it in the supermarket. I think it was four pounds for this. Um, and as you can see, I have put a, a, a fluon barrier around the top. Now, it's it's actually quite good, but it doesn't have to be perfect. It just needs to slow them down and keep them in there for a few minutes because you'll see what I'm going to do with this in a second. Um, long handled tweezers. You've got to have a pair of long handled tweezers. They are essential for working in outworlds and doing what I'm about to do. So first of all, let's get the grape out. 
So uh, take the lid off the outworld and always work with the lid off the outworld. I know it has to be off for me to get in, but don't put it back on, leave it off because anything, you'll see what I do in a second. So um, yes, here's the grape and uh, very carefully try and get hold of it without squashing any ants with the long handle tweezers. And then once I've got it, the first thing I do is shake it as much as possible. Try to get any to fall off. I think one just flicked off there that you can, but they are remarkable remarkably good at clinging on um, so you won't manage to shake them all off and as you can see there are still ants on here and as soon as I put it down bang off they all go but because I've created this tub with the fluon barrier I've got them all contained in here and therefore they're not actually going to go anywhere um, I can keep them until I'm ready to start picking them all up and dropping them back in and what I do for this is get yourself a piece of cotton wool, like a cotton wool bud, and you can just sort of dab over the top of them and very gently just squeeze and you can get them in there. And then you just have to like tap them off over the outworld. Sometimes it can be tricky. It takes quite a bit of tapping. Make sure you don't whack the ant by mistake and, and damage it. Um, this particular one gets stuck on the long piece of cotton. Look, it's dangling on the end, but it falls off eventually. And I'm not too worried. It's got a bit of cotton maybe tangled with it. They'll, they'll clear that up and take that off. So yeah, just keep doing that. This can be a time consuming process until you've got them all. And then I check the grape. I make sure I squeeze it gently. I don't crush it completely, but gently squeeze it and just check it to make sure that there's none still left inside it. And once I'm sure that's done, it's time for the apple. Um, this is even more tricky. Um, I shake it and very few come off. But uh, you'll see here what I try to do is put it close to the ground and ones will, when you put it close to the ground, jump off. But you've got to try and do it without new ones jumping on. So it's a question. That's why I keep withdrawing it when I see new ones coming. But you'll notice there are a few there that take the opportunity to, to do the little jump off and, and move to the ground. Um, but even so, there are still... Um, ants in the apple, on the apple, on the tweezers. So I end up with ants in the, the, the pot again and I have to go through the same process that I did just now. Um, this one actually is actually on the tweezers, which is great because um, I can just take the whole tweezers over the outworld and flick it off um, and get, get tap that off. So that's one less. But then, yeah, the same process that I did with the grape, I have to pick all of these ants up with a little bud of cotton and flick them back out. Oh, and what I'm doing here, I'm just saying, keep, roll your sleeves up because you don't want ants to get in your clothes. That's a nightmare. And keep checking yourself to make sure you haven't got any running over you. But if you have, you can just brush those off into the outworld with a bit of cotton wool. Just brush them off you with a bit of cotton wool. So yeah, I go through the same process again, picking up ants. And once I've got it, I uh, check again that it's clear of ants. And actually here you can see all the little holes that they've drilled into the apple to get deeper into the core so that they could um, suck all of the juice out of it. But yeah, I'm fairly confident this is now free of ants. So um, that's that done. And then I've just got to pick these last few up, which are running around in here. Um, and yeah, this is now the piece of paper that has the drops of syrup on it. And this is why I fold my paper up to give me a little tab on it that I can pick up with the tweezers. That's normally a lot easier to pick up and um, you can get them off. And as you can see, they're really rather fired up now and wild because they've had a disturbance in there and uh, all their sugar has been stolen from them. Not that there was that much left, but they were still content to go to the very last drop. But don't worry, girls, I'm going to feed you both um, um, with both things and uh, replace everything. So uh, first of all, the grape. You do have to be a little careful you don't like squash an ant. Um, unfortunately, I killed one with a piece of apple where I put it down on top of the ant. And when I took it out three days later, I found this dead ant sort of on, on the underside of the apple. It hadn't obviously been squashed. Unfortunately, it probably just died there because it couldn't go anywhere. So do be careful when you put down. Um, that's a piece of pear they're getting this time rather than apple. Um, they do like pear and the syrup's going back in on the uh, new piece of um, greaseproof paper. So that's the job done. Uh, here's the grape after a few minutes. Um, they're 
really exploring that, getting the new sugar, very happy about that. And uh, then I'll have a little shot as well, just into the top of the new Outworld. And you can see they've gone mad for the syrup and they're all over the pear. Um, so yeah, that's my cleaning routine. That's how I take food out and put fresh food in and try to avoid uh, escapes when I'm doing it. Thank you for watching. Goodbye, everybody.